Good morning and welcome. You are worshiping with Aldersgate United Methodist Church, and I'm Reverend Molly McGee, and today we're going to talk about righteousness and how God makes us pure in God's own eyes. So take a moment, set your space wherever you're worshiping. If you're worshiping in house, just get yourself comfortable as we prepare our hearts and open our minds to worship the one true God. Amen. Thank you for joining us here at Aldersgate United Methodist Church this morning. Our first order of uh, corporate worship this morning is our hymn of praise. This morning it's Blessed Assurance. It can be found on page 369 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Please stand as you are able as we sing all three verses together.
as we remain standing, we can take a moment to turn to our neighbor and greet one another in the name of Christ. And if you're joining us online, please feel free to leave us a comment in the comment section below. As we go back to our seats, let's remain standing for the reading of the gospel. Good morning. This reading this morning comes from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. This reading comes from the Common English Bible. See what kind of love the Father has given to us and that we should be called God's children. And that is what we are, because the world didn't recognize him, it does not recognize us. Dear friends, now we are God's children, and it hasn't yet appeared what we will be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him, because we'll see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, even as he is pure, Every person who practices sin commits an act of rebellion, and sin is rebellion. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and there is no sin in him. Every person who remains in relationship to him does not sin. Any person who sins has not seen him or known him. Little children, make sure no one deceives you. The person who practice, practices righteousness is righteous in the same way that Jesus is righteous. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. People come forward for our children's moment, please. Good morning. I have... What are these? Okay, what do these do? Okay. In today's scripture, it says, because the world didn't recognize him, it doesn't recognize us. What do y'all think this means? Because the world didn't recognize him, it doesn't recognize us. Well, we aren't seen because so many people don't see God, right? They don't recognize that we're believers. All right, this ties in with the glasses because glasses help people see clear, clearer and more in depth. God, God's like glasses. He helps us see the world the way he does. So today I want you all to go out and tell people that God loves them. All right, let's pray. All right, dear God, please help us to see the world the way you want us to. Let the world become clear to us. Bless our mommies and daddies, our brothers and sisters, our friends and our pets. Amen. All right, so on the way back to y'all see, I want y'all to tell people that God loves them.
God loves you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for telling me that. No, they did too. No, it's good. God loves you. And that's important for everyone to know. And we should tell everybody that all the time. God loves you. In spite of who you are, just because of who you are, God loves you. And more people need to hear that and know that. Okay, um, y'all survived this week. Okay. If anyone has damage that they need cleaned up, the conference emergency response team is in town and they're reaching out. So if any of you have damage, they want to make sure that the church members get help. So if you, someone you know or yourself, just let me know or someone in the office know and we'll make sure someone gets to help you right now. Of course, they're going to help people who aren't in the churches, but right now they're starting with the church people to make sure we get covered, Okay. And we definitely want to keep people in our prayers. And we definitely want to thank Sue Helen and Stephen and Jacob and Aubrey and Grace who are out here Thursday cutting the tree and removing the tree and putting it out front in case you didn't notice we had a tree come down. Um, very fortunate it just went <laughs> right out across the driveway. Made getting in and out a little hairy for a bit, but that was easy enough to handle. So thank y'all very, very much for coming. And when you see them, thank them because it was a lot of hard work. And you didn't have to do it. So say thank them. Yay! <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Lewis, see, I missed him because I left. I wasn't doing it. Um, I prayed and I cared for them. Okay, Lewis was out there too. Smitty was out there too. Good. All right. Let us pray. Lord, you are there for us on the beautiful sunny days and on the stormy days. On the stormy days, it may seem scary and we may not think you're close, but you are there in the midst, protecting and loving us through a broken world. And we are so very grateful for that. We pray for all those who receive damage and are recovering all those who still may be without power, and all those who just feel lost right now, Lord. Just let them know you're there and where we can be your hands and feet, where we can help. Offer a helping hand, offer a prayer, offer a loving spirit. Let us know where we can be, Lord, and we thank you for that. We ask you today, Lord, to keep our hearts and our minds open as we open up to you, as your word speaks to us, and as your present moves among us. And Lord, though I'm not worthy to speak for you, I ask that you use me as a vessel through which others hear you speak. In the name of our one true God, amen. All right, so our scripture today talks about sinning, and as Sue Helen completely stumped the children, what does it mean if the world doesn't recognize him, he doesn't recognize us? Yeah, it's, it's another heavy day of Scripture because that's what this John Scripture, this first John Scripture is taking us through. It's this understanding again. We know that Jesus got out of the tomb on Easter Sunday. We know that Jesus goes again to sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty and will come again. So what does that mean? What does that really mean? And this is what this Scripture is telling us. And it, it's talking about sin again. And as we talked about last week, if you sin, you repent and Jesus came to cleanse us of our sin, to wash us white as snow, to, to completely remove that sin from us. Completely remove it. So we become people without sin. It doesn't mean we're not going to sin tomorrow. It just means that, that forgiveness will be there, that offer of repentance is there. And when we acknowledge our sin, it is completely taken away from us. You don't have to carry that little bit around, you know, that little guilt you feel. Or that little worry you feel about something you did. You just take that, that. Jesus has taken that away. You are free and clear to go and sin no more. And that's ultimately what it's saying too. Is that we are people without sin because we are people of Jesus Christ. Because we are people that need, know that Jesus Christ died for our sins. And rose again to live with God. We are those people so we know we are people without sin. Even though we do sin. It's that that confusion, that tension that we live with. We live in a broken world where tornadoes happen and people are harmed and, dam and damage happens, but we also live with the righteousness of Jesus Christ, that we are freed from our sins. And the world doesn't know Jesus because the world hasn't heard of Jesus. Well, the world's heard of Jesus by this point in time. We live in a pretty 
small world now with the communications we have, but the world doesn't have to accept Jesus, and a lot of people don't accept Jesus, and when they don't accept Jesus, they don't accept that we are also followers and believers, just like Sue Helen Head. She understood that. <laughs> she got that. They don't know who we are and why we're different and why we are unique in this world. Even it seems like there's a couple billion of us around the planet, we are still unique in this world as the people of Jesus Christ, as the family of God. And the scripture says you're children of God, you're children of God. And the, the apostle Paul tells us we're adopted in through Christ. We are made brothers and sisters in Christ as we are adopted in to the family of God. So we are the children of God. We live with God in our lives. God has come found us to be human and sinful and said, I'm going to fix that. I'm going to free them from their sin so they don't have to live with that burden and carry that burden all the time. And that forgiveness and grace will always be with them because I love them and I know they're pure and I know they're wonderful. And someday, someday it says when God comes back, we will see God fully as God is. We can't imagine that now. We can't imagine that now, and when that time comes, we will see God fully as God is, and we will be pure as God is pure. That is God's promise and God's action, that not only are we free from sins now, that process continues, and it continues through eternity till it reaches its peak when Christ comes again and we are all in one fully loving and complete heavenly kingdom. That time is yet to come. We're still here in the midst of the muck. And yet it says to live with righteousness. It says specifically to practice righteousness as God is righteous. Are you righteous? Yeah, you are. Okay, so here is the deep theological lesson. <laughs> and this is where if you believe you're free from your sin, okay, you're freed from your sin... In this right moment, nobody is intentionally sinning that I can tell. You're sitting still. You should be okay. We are free from our sin. Through the grace of Jesus Christ. And there are three types of grace. As we as United Methodists understand it, there is provenient grace. Which came before you even thought about being a Christian which came when you thought, I don't want to be a Christian anymore. That grace is there to pull you back in, to draw you in, to say, come, there's something here for you. We don't feel it, we don't know it, but God's grace is with us before we get any of these deep theological lessons. And there's justifying grace. That's the moment when we decide, yes, I'm a Christian, it doesn't have to be a big, bold, lightning bolt moment. It can just be a private you sitting there going, yeah, I get this. I, I get this. I, even if it's I think I believe in Jesus, <laughs> that justifying grace is there. That justifying grace is there. And in that moment, through the action of God, nothing to do with you whatsoever, your power, but God's power makes you righteous. God's power makes you righteous. God knows that we're going to go and sin. God knows that we're going to have problems. God knows we're going to make mistakes. But God said, these are my people who, who claim me and love me. These are my children. They are pure in my eyes. Pure in my eyes. And then we began the process of being Christian. We begin our day-to-day -day life of walking as a follower of Jesus Christ. And some days we're good at it. Most days we're good at it. Some days we're not. I'm not going to get into that. You know when those days happen. But that's okay. Because God's grace is so profound. We are granted those days when things aren't so Christian in our lives. We are granted those days because the third type of grace, the sanctifying grace, is working with us throughout our life. 
our lives. And the more we open ourselves to Christ, the more we hear from God, the more we try to practice our faith and be a Christian and walk in the Christian way, the more we try to do that, the more grace God pours on us, sanctifying us. So not only are you righteous, you are sanctified. Not only are you righteous, you are being made holy right this minute. You are holier now than when you walked in the front door. Because God's grace is with us and changing us and purifying us. And yes, some of us are going to leave here and maybe do some not so good things. Maybe sin in some way. But that doesn't mean God's grace is going to leave us. That's why Jesus went to the cross. That's why Jesus got out of the tomb. So we don't have to worry about that. That's why we're Easter people. Happy Easter. Right, because Jesus is with us and God's grace is with us. And we are righteous in God's eyes. You are righteous right now in God's eyes. God's not a fool. God doesn't, doesn't think you're perfect. God doesn't think you're without sin. God just says, you are my beautiful child. I see you in the purity of who you are. I see the beauty of you and who you are, that unconditional love that says, yeah, I know we got some issues to work with, but it's okay. You're beautiful and pure and holy right now in my eyes, and I am never going to leave you. And I'm going to work with you through the grace of Jesus Christ. We're going to work together to make you even more holy and more righteous and more beautiful. As you work, as we work to become the children that God created us to be. That purity we were born with before the world made us mad or told us we were wrong or did something cruel to us. That purity, God sees that in us and knows that's in us and says, that's who I created you to be, and I want you to be that person, and I'm going to help you until Christ comes again. And there is a fourth grace. It's, I don't talk about it much because it's the glorifying grace, and it's the grace that takes us from this life into the next. It's the grace that when Christ comes again, we will all be glorified. I can't tell you what that's like. I hadn't gotten there yet. None of us have, so it's okay. But there's yet more grace yet to come. Even in eternity in God's beautiful kingdom, there is still grace to come. So we live with righteousness. We practice our righteousness. Which sounds like we should walk around very haughty and looking down our noses at everyone and saying, I'm righteous, you poor pitiful thing. You're not. No. It means we accept everybody as they are and love everybody as they are and try to see everybody as God sees them. As God sees us. And recognize that none of us are perfect and all of us make mistakes. And in God's eyes, no sin is worse than any other. We like to put categories and like, this is bad, this is really bad. But God says, you're all sinners. You do your best, but sometimes you fail. I still forgive you and still love you. And we are called when we practice our righteousness to love each other. In that same way. And sometimes it's easier to love a perfect stranger that way than to love some people in our family or our closest neighbors. Because a perfect stranger, we're like, you're you're not perfect, I accept that. But someone close, oh, I know how you're not perfect. And we fall into these traps. Human traps, sinful traps. We don't mean to. We know we're not supposed to judge, but we still judge. We judge ourselves typically worse than anyone else ever will. And when we judge ourselves so much, we can't help but turn that judgment on other people. And we don't see them with righteousness, and we don't see them with love. And sometimes it's the people in our families, our closest neighbors, the people we care about the most, that we say, I can't live with that. And you turn your back on them. Now I'm not talking about when real harm comes to you in an abusive situation or in a, an addictive situation. Because loving yourself means stepping away. But also with an addictive situation, 
Loving that person often means stepping away. What I'm talking about is those people in our lives that we separate ourselves from because we're just done with their behavior or we can't accept who they are or what they've done. And so we just walk away. That's when our righteousness is, well, it's still there because God still loves us. But that's when our holiness is challenged a bit. If we practice our righteousness, we do our very best to love everyone. Everyone as God loves them. Now, we, we're human. We can't reach that perfect love. We cannot reach that unconditional love. We are just not God. But we can try our best. We can try our best to love. We can try our best to mend relationships that have been broken. We can try our best to heal relationships that are damaged. We can try our best to connect to the people who love us and whom we love. We can try our best. Now, here's the thing. This is about you. I'm sorry. I know I'm not supposed to, we're not supposed to say it's about me. This is about you because that other person that you try to mend a relationship with, they don't have to accept that. That's their walk. That's their righteous journey. That's practicing their faith. But your effort at mending that relationship, your effort to say, I forgive you, I'm here, that's you practicing righteousness. That's you living with the righteousness of Jesus Christ in your life. We go through this life all the time. And we hurt each other. And we judge each other. And we accuse each other. And sometimes we never say anything verbally. It's just, I'm done with X, Y, and Z. And when we do that, we have to sit with God and say, God, is this what I should be doing? Is there a way to heal this relationship? Is there a way to mend this relationship? Is there a way to forgive? One theology of forgiveness is that God does the forgiving so that person that you've been mad at for 30 years is already forgiven. But we do the work of reconciliation. We do the work of mending that relationship. It doesn't mean you have to become best friends. It just means I forgive you. I'm not carrying this burden. Let's be at peace. Let's be at peace. Practicing righteousness is not easy. It comes to us easily because we don't really have to work for it. We just have to believe. And our faith carries us forward. The power of Jesus Christ in our life carries us forward. But we are called to practice that righteousness. Practice it. To try to live into the gifts that God has given us. We'll be fully holy someday. We're not there yet. But in the meantime, as God's grace is bountiful and complete and filling, we need to keep trying to say, God, help me. Help me do this. Help me mend relationships. Reconnect with family. Reconnect with friends. Find a way to help someone that you have written off as those people. Find a way to connect to someone that you have written off as beyond help. It doesn't have to be big. It can be prayerful. It's definitely between you and Jesus Christ. But it's one of the ways we can practice living with the righteousness that God has given us. We are freed from our sins. We are free from our sins. We do not carry the burden of our sins. And if you believe that about yourself, you, do you believe it about other people? And if you believe it about other people, then let us work with righteousness. Live with righteousness. Practice righteousness. Practice our own forgiveness, our own grace. 
So that when God comes again, when Jesus comes again, we don't have to say, oh, I need a remedial class, Jesus. You can say, I'm here, Jesus. I'm ready. I'm ready because I've heard and I've tried and I've done my best to live my life for you. And I think Jesus is going to be pleased with all of us. But we just got to keep trying. Remember who we are. Remember whose we are. And remember that the whole world is there for God's grace. As we receive it, let us share it. And know that we are righteous as God has made us righteous. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our response to the message this morning is, My faith looks up to thee. It can be found in the United Methodist Hymnal on page 452. We'll sing the first three verses together, and we can remain seated as we sing. together the Apostles Creed. <coughs> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we transition into a time of prayer, our call to prayer is Breathe on Me, Breath of God. It's found on page 420 in the United Methodist Hymnal. We'll sing two verses together.
take a moment and breathe. Embrace the quiet of God. Almighty God, you draw us in. You bring us into communion with each other. You bring us into life with the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You bring us in pure relationship. One with Christ, one with each other, and one with all the world. You take this large planet with so many different types of people, so many different places and ethnicity, so many wonderful things, and you draw us all together into one creation. And you connect us. You connect us through your grace and your loving spirit. You connect us through your righteousness, which you bestow. Help us see all of these other people, all of these other people you have created. Help us see them as your creation. Help us see them as with the same loving eyes that you see us. Help us feel your grace and know that we are forgiven. And help us share that grace so that others are forgiven through us. You do the work of forgiving. You do the heavy lifting, the hard stuff, Lord. And we say thank you. Thank you. So help us live and work with reconciliation. Help us connect, reconnect, mend and heal relationships as we need to. And help us recognize where love needs to be tough, but still loving. Help us recognize that someone harming us is not love. Help us recognize that someone using us is not love. But help us see with love. Help us see with love and see where the loving thing is to step away. And help us see with love when the loving thing is to say, I'm sorry. Help us love more. Our prayer every day, Lord, help us to love more. Show us how to practice our faith, to live with our righteousness, to live into your kingdom, the one yet to come, the one that is here now, and help us truly step up every day to being the people you called us and created us to be, Lord. Forgive us every day as well for the sins we take. Encourage us for the sins we pass by and lay down. Fill us with your loving joy when we recognize truly how loved we are and how connected we are and how important we are to you so we can share that joy with the other people in our lives. And Lord, we also pray for those people we have not yet met, who we have not yet loved, but are in need of your love. Help us meet them and recognize them as gifts from you. 
We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Please stand as we sing again, and we will sing freely, freely. So on page 800, uh, sorry, 389 in the United Methodist Hymnal, we'll sing both verses together. Please stand as you are able. seen you may not have seen an email I sent out we are taking up a special offering I'm not going to take it up right now um, because we have our boxes our bowls you can place it in it's a special offering for storm recovery it's going to Epworth and Jim Faddock and North Shore recovery which our own conference ER team is working with to help our community recover we're going to have this open for a few weeks because the recovery is going to take a while so if you can't give today or aren't ready to give today, that's okay. Um, Give as you're able, give as you feel led to help in the recovery effort and the money that we give will be going to supplies and helping support those people who are coming here to do the work that needs to be done. And we're so grateful that it's housed right here in our, it's right there, I'm pointing behind me, it's right there. It's usually behind me. See, when I'm in an office, it's behind me. But here is right there that we are so connected and have this ability to share and to give. Again, you can give online. You can give in the back of the sanctuary. You can give at the office. You can put it in the mail. However you feel the need to give, do give, um, especially to this cause, but also to the church. Don't forget us as well as we continue to serve our community and take care of the people around us. All right. Okay, well, Marsha Countryman, please come forward. Don't look at me that way. This is Marsha's last Sunday with us after, what, 45 years? 45 years. She's moving away to better climates, (laughs) 
That's how I see it. She may see it differently. That's how I see it. Um, and so many people have loved Marsha and served with Marsha and been served by Marsha, and that's such a beautiful thing, and we just want to say goodbye to her and pray for her. If there's anyone who would like to come up who loves Marsha, not saying I don't, but anyone who wants to come up and join me here and lay hands on her and be with her as we pray, feel free to come up. Let us pray. Lord, you have blessed us so richly with Marcia and her service. You have blessed her even more, we know that, but you have touched this church through her touch, and we just want to say thank you. Thank you for all the gifts and her service and her time and her smiles that she has given us, that she has given us. And I know we have supported and loved her, and thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for bringing us into our community and sending her to a new community in in Washington State. I know she's got a church there, people who love her and who will welcome her, so take care of her and Ken as they journey and as the move happens, but also in the years to come. Continue to bless her, continue to allow her to serve, but also allow her to recognize how other people love her and serve her. And to allow people to serve her, because sometimes those good servers aren't good at receiving. So love her, Lord. Protect her. Take care of her and Ken as they move. And take care of us as we learn to get along without her, because a lot does need to change. And we'll, we'll, we'll adapt to that somehow, Lord. But most of all, we thank you for Marcia and her beauty and all that you have given to us through her. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 you got lots of people here who, if you cry, they'll comfort you. <laughs> it's just been a, a wonderful time, and I will miss my church family more than I can say. These people have just been here for us all the time that we have been here. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. Y'all can shift to one side. I've got some announcements. <laughs> you can hug her after church. We got to keep moving. All right, um, but do hug her after church if you're not if you're not going to see her because they're leaving tomorrow. Um, Van Gogh coming up on Saturday. Today is the last day to sign up if you want to cook. But if you don't want to cook or you're already cooking or you're doing something else, come to Van Gogh. Help us raise money for missions. Help us celebrate some wonderful cooks in our own church and the community and help us eat good. You know, come be a part of that and celebrate. There's also a silent auction for the youth and for the Backpack Blessings Ministry. It's going to be a fun night. It's Saturday night, 6 to 8. And next door, that is behind me. Um, Come and be a part of that and enjoy that. Uh, the gratitude luncheon is this weekend. That's with the ladies' luncheon is this week. Um, VBS is coming up. Senior Sunday is coming up. And I know I'm forgetting some other things. Cecilia, I'm looking at you and you're looking away. Hmm? Grown ups is the 25th. So there's always something coming up, people, which is a good thing. So embrace your church. Yes. The blood drive is coming up also on the 24th, correct, which is. A week from Wednesday. So, participate, engage, enjoy, celebrate. This is our church. God has given us and God has made us righteous so that we can be a part of God's good world. And we are connected and as we give to the storm and our neighbors who are receive damage, we are there for them. This is what God does for us and with us and through us. And this is the beauty of being Easter people of being God's family. Even though Marsha's leaving, we're still connected. She's still going to send cards, I bet. And we'll definitely (laughs) send cards to her. We are always connected through the grace of Jesus Christ, and we are so grateful, grateful for that beautiful, wonderful gift. Happy Easter. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Go today in peace, go in love, and go recognize how connected we are. Amen.